Hey, hi there Aries. Welcome to my channel. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to those energies and influences that are coming through for your weekend reading, June 7th to the 9th of 2019. Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is a predictive, condensed, general reading. Please only take those portions that resonate with you. Crosswatcher energies are interchangeable, and I invite you to subscribe, like, comment, and share. It really helps me out a lot, and it helps to bring your vibration into those future readings. I also send my intentions out for my community and my viewers. Please remember to check out that description box below. There is a free birth chart calculator at the bottom. Thanks, you guys. And after the reading is a take note moment. Okay, Aries. Off camera, I've done a protective blessing. I've shuffled and meditated over these cards just for you. Your first card, it's the general atmosphere. It's the background and the basis of the matter. Number zero of the Major Arcana in the Rider Waite deck. The Fool card. This is an air element. The ruling planet is Uranus. The first of the Major Arcana of the 22 cards that show hidden meanings. This is a new path. A choice is offered. This could be traveling. It's a beginning, an entrance. This is a trusting life. It's a blind leap of faith. It's taking a risk. It's absolute faith in the universe. The fool gives us courage to continue and prods us to seek new experiences. And you should be following your own instinct rather than the advice of others. And if you follow your instincts, you'll be provided with guidance. This is being on the edge of an important new beginning and trusting where the universe has taken you. Could be embarking on a new way of life, a physical journey, moving, starting a new job, or getting married or divorced. But it's that first step, despite some fear. This is a sign, a green light, to step into the unknown. There's unlimited potential here simplifying things or acting on a whim, enjoying the moment and taking life as it comes. Your second card, and this is the energy that's crossing over your path. This can be a challenge. The Two of Swords, Aries. This is air energy. This is indecision and stalemate and standstill. It's postponed decisions. It's stasis. This could be a stressful decision, so seek more information and look honestly at a change that needs to be made. You need more facts. You need to ask questions and contemplate your options. This is putting off making a decision for now, feeling uncertain. You may not wish to offend or hurt someone involved. You may need to withdraw to contemplate your options and collect more facts needed to make the decision. Or you might be ignoring your emotions and using logic to deny how you are feeling. Or you may be denying the truth of something so you don't have to deal with it. Your third card, and this is how it affects you. Queen of Wands, Aries. This is a water energy person, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. This is someone that's emotional and they're loving. They're a dreamer, they're empathetic, and they could be psychic. This is one of the powerful, of the most powerful of the minor arcana cards. Her power and accomplishments are rooted in love. This is a romantic woman with intuition, a good wife and mother. She's more integrated into society than the king. She sits firmly on the land, a symbol of her connection with the real world and of other people. At the same time, water flows into her dress, denoting she does not repress her emotions. This person is beautiful and fair and dreamy, and she contemplates a cup. One of her aspects is she can see visions in a cup, and she also acts, and her activity feeds her dream. She's creative with a strong will that enables her to develop her talents, and she draws inspiration from her own life and from the world around her. She's capable of deep romantic love. She leads with her heart and not her head. She's someone that's able to put into practice what their vision, her visions decree. She's honest, devoted, and loyal. This is success and happiness and pleasure indicated. 
Your fourth card, it's the position of the future. It's the outcome. The results and the advice. The Ten of Pentacles, Aries. Really good card for the future. Earth energy. This has to do with your home and your legacy and ancestors. Could be a settlement coming in. It's a solid and secure life. It's monetary gain and increased stability and enjoying the fruits of labor. This can be a house or a dwelling. It's security and material comfort. Wealth and social standing. It's permanence and wealth. It's wisdom and physical security. This could be a successful financial venture or a settlement that will provide for those concerned or a very special partnership. This is a card of traditions. Could be a holiday celebration. This is long-term stability. It's firm foundations for home and family life. It can also suggest a property acquired or traditions being passed down in the family with a feeling of continuity and security. This is a vision goal that's going to be reached and there's had to be discipline. Your fifth card, it's the bottom of the deck card. It's the underlying issue. This is what's unseen. Number 14 of the Major Arcana in the Rider Waite deck, Temperance. This could be a Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising. There's patience needed here and compromise and adjustment. There's inner calm and tranquility. There's adapting and tempering and coordination and self-control. There's modification and working in harmony with others. It's compromise instead of battle. It's never going to one extreme or the other and having control over your own life. This is what you have imagined will come to pass. Successful combinations will be achieved. This is the vision of the new life that comes after death. The ability to combine different elements in life such as work and pleasure, love and sex, feelings and action, openness and confidence. This indicates victory over doubts and rigidities. Also advises a cautious attitude and be moderate and take the middle way. You're adapting to situations with a clear mind and a calm heart. There is nothing in the cosmos but vibration and all forms of vibration can be modified and managed by the adept. This is calm and balance and a need to have patience for events surrounding you as they play out. It's something that you've already begun. There's nothing you can do now but just have patience and watch everything develop. You might need to draw in your emotions and stop overreacting to outside forces. It's contemplation and reflection on events and relationships and work. And you can be the calming force in chaos. Here's your advice from the Oracle deck, The Sacred Traveler, by Denise Lynn. Aries, you've got grounding. Go deep. Explore your roots. Take time to ground yourself in what is truly essential. Remember what's important in life and let go of everything else. Let go of the busyness and the frantic pace of life. Be present in the moment. Release the flurry of worry about the future or the rehashing of the past. This is a time to engage and reflect. It might be worth taking a second look at something you previously previously passed over. Things might not always be as they seem, so look deeper into situations and relationships in your life. Explore your roots. Something that seems closed may in fact just be ready to open. If you go beneath the surface, you may find hidden gems of truth, light, or abundance. And the sacred traveler wants you to know that sometimes the voyage is fraught with activity of so many places to go and things to do that the personal energy gets scattered. It's during those times that the sacred traveler needs to ground their energy. Grounding can be simply a matter of leaning against a tree and imagining yourself reaching into the roots and up into the branches. This card can also mean you need to stand up for yourself. Don't back down. And stand up for those who can't protect themselves. Believe in yourself. Hold firm to what you know to be true. You're like the ancient oak with its roots deep in the earth. You are noble, valiant, and strong. Here's your animal message. 
from Susie Green. You've got orangutan, Aries, working to live joyously, not living to work. Orangutan, utterly content in his lush rainforest, sees no pressing need to swing on agile limbs from his soft, arboreal bed at dawn. He rises when refreshed, stretching great arms before breakfasting unhurriedly on ripe fruits, and only then carrying on with the business of his day. For orangutan understands the true value of time and counsels that you use it wisely. Are you working to live, or living merely to work? Adjust your priorities lest time slips silently away, taking pleasure with it. Here's your take note moment. We need to use our subconscious minds to be able to utilize the law of attraction. Tarot cards are full of symbols that have been used for many generations. That's why I hold the cards up for a long time. Your subconscious sees the symbols even when your conscious is not aware of it. The symbols represent eternal truths and principles in life, the common thread of truth that's in all great religions. We transform our lives by using the power of our subconscious minds. Thanks, you guys. I hope you stay tuned in and leave me a comment or a thumbs up, and please subscribe. Now remember, what goes around comes around, so I'm sending you out love and light and blessings. Thanks for watching.